Hello, in this video we're going to look at multivariate descriptive statistics. Specifically, we're going to look at the sample mean vector, the sample covariance matrix, sample correlation matrix, um, and let's just jump right in. Here, you, I think of it as collecting K pieces of information for each observation. And so, if, if for example, if this were a clinical trial, a patient would come in and we would collect blood pressure, height, weight, you know, some uh, medical background stuff. And those are all pieces of information for that observation or that patient. And so that's kind of the setting that we're in. And we're going to collect the sample size of in observations or in patients. And so the i observation is a K vector, K by one vector. And perhaps that should have a tick mark on it. And, and here is the, the data structure, often called the data matrix. So the observations go across this way. So there's, there's in patients or in observations, and each observation has K pieces of information collected, which we call variables. So there's K variables in observations. And so each, this is a, an observation that's an observation, that's the nth observation. You can generically just de describe that as X, and that's called the data matrix for our uh, experiment. And the subscripts, the first one represents, you know, it kind of looks like the row, and this is the column, row, column, row, column. But really it's the, the variable and which observation. And so this one here is the kth variable on the second observation. Now, we can think of these, we're gonna think of them in two ways. One, as columns, so right here. So an, an X vector is gonna represent the column. So uh, X1 is, is the first observation, Xn is the nth observation, but we can also think of them as rows. And I'm gonna let that be represented with a Y. So Y1 is the first variable, all the data from the first variable. So this, this right here is a one by n row vector, right, row vector. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And so both of those are pretty common ways to represent the data matrix. And when we're deriving some of what we do, we'll, we'll sometimes think about them like this and sometimes think about it like this. So let's look at the sample mean vector first. And it is, you add up the observations and divide by n. But remember that these are k by one vectors. So we're adding up n vectors. And when you add up vectors, you add them component wise. So you add, you add it, all the variable one components, variable k, etc. And if we were to divide n into every one of those, then it would be the sample mean for variable one, sample mean for variable two, et cetera. But collectively, it's the sample mean vector. Now we're gonna write this in matrix form. So we have X bar, which we said was this matrix, but this right here, this says add up each of the first components add up the second components, add up the, the um, kth components, right? But And so if we represent it like this, where this is the data matrix, and this is a, a, a n by one vector of ones, so to get this number, you take this row times this. But since this is a one, it's, 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 it's like adding up all these components and it goes there. And then you do that for the second row. Take the second row times this, and it's, it's that piece. And you do that for all of them. So the sample mean vector can be thought of like this. 1 over n times a data matrix times a, co a column vector of 1s. Now let's look at the sample covariance matrix. So this is a matrix of k by k. And the mean vector was k by 1. But here, each, each um, entry is the covariance. So this is the covariance of, of uh, 
variable one with itself. So it's the variance. This is the variance of variable one, variance of variable two, the variance of the Kate variable. Now all these here are covariances. So this is the covariance of variable one and variable two. This is the covariance of variable two and variable one. So, and it's actually the same. So this is a symmetric matrix. All these entries equal these entries. And as a reminder, the variance of a variable is this. You add up each variable, subtract the mean, square it, sum them, divide by n. Um, now, some might say, wait, wait, we need to divide by n minus one. Um, yeah, if you want an unbiased estimate, that's what you should do. But for this video, we're just going to call it n. And for all the covariances, the sample covariances are like this. So this is Sij. So these are variables uh, xi, or yeah, and this is the ith mean. The, these are the j variables, and this is the j mean. So. Yeah, so it's a covariance, the, the covariance between the two variables, and that's represented like this. Uh, let's put it in matrix form. And this is going to be a little tedious, but I think it's worth it in the long run if you're going to delve into uh, multivariate statistics. So each entry here can be is this sum. This is a sum. Right? And I write, and so each of these pieces are actually these pieces, but the sum is taken out front, okay? And, and I mainly do that because it's a little bit lazy. I didn't want to write the sum in front of each of the variables, but it's technically the same. This matrix, so there's going to be n matrices that we add together, but when you add matrices, you add them component-wise, so it is the same. Now, there's a shortcut formula for the variance and the covariances. So if we take this sum into each of these components, and then you do that shortcut formula, and we're skipping that piece because of uh, time on the video, but the variance can be represented as the sum of the variable squared minus the mean squared. And that is the same for every diagonal entry. And the, the off diagonals, will be the, the sum of variable 2 and variable 1 minus the mean of variable 2 and variable 1, etc. So now you can think of this matrix as, you know, you know the first piece is a, is a sum everywhere, and the second piece we're subtracting off something. So we're going to split this matrix into two matrices, and we do it like this. So the first piece are these, these sum components, and the second piece are the, the minus the matrix. But these right here, this can be thought of as the product of two vectors. So for instance, so here you take row one, column one, and that's this. Row one, column two, that'd be next. Row one, column K, that's this. So this matrix can be thought of as the uh, uh, product of two vectors. So this matrix, so here we are traversing down the rows, right? So when the when the, it's a number in front that represents a row and then the since this is an index on the second in, index, it goes across the row. So this represents row two and this represents row one. And it's actually the same. So this is row one dotted, you know, times itself. This is row one times row K. So we can replace those with the dot product, right? So if we look at this one, the sum of the products of each of those elements, it's the same as this. So if this is a, remember, this is a row vector. And then when you transpose it, it makes a column. So it's the product of those, and you get this sum back. So now we have these matrices, but this one can be, the way it's aligned here, it can be thought of as um, the product of two vectors, right? One times it's one, one times two, one times K, and you can do that for the entire uh, matrix. This here is the sample mean vector, 
and this is the transpose of the sample mean vector so we'll just put that in there but this right here the the this is row one of the data matrix row two of the data matrix row k of the data matrix and this is the transpose so if we were to take these and transpose it over then we get this so this is the data matrix and this is the transpose of the data matrix now <coughs> we if you write the sample mean in matrix form we said it was this and the transpose of that now here there's an x common in both of those so we can factor it out and then when you distribute that transpose the, the x prime is on the back so we can factor it out this way and we're left with this and this is the sample covariance matrix in in matrix form and one note which we're not proven here due to time this matrix right here is item potent <coughs> Um, so that times itself is itself. Now here's a quick question. Is this um, full rank? And the answer is no. And I have a um, video called item potent matrices that deal with that. There's only one item potent matrix that's full rank and that's the identity matrix. So every other identity matrix is not full rank. So this is not a full rank matrix. The sample correlation matrix is the correlation between the variables. So the correlation between variable one with itself is 100%, it's one. And that's the same way with every variable correlated with itself, it's one. Now the off diagonals are the correlation with the variable with another variable. So it's variable one and variable two. And the correlation is defined like this. It's the sample covariance divided by the square root of the sample variances. Of course the correlation with itself is one. Now to put this in matrix form let's let D be a diagonal matrix with these sample variances. So the inverse of D is still a diagonal matrix but it's the it's the reciprocal of these diagonal matrix now if we take it and then we're going to denote d to the minus one half it's still a diagonal matrix but we take the square root of each of the elements which since this is one it's one it's just the the bottom so the square root of the variance is the standard deviation so this is the standard deviation so then it becomes quite easy to show that the correlation is d inverse times the sample variant covariance matrix times d inverse so when you when you dot s with these it ends up being that you it's like dividing by each of these elements this and then that one does the same thing but this implies that if you were to take um, left multiplied by uh, d to the one half and right multiplied by d to the one half you can represent the sample covariance matrix as this as used as the sample uh, correlation matrix now um, since I had room on page 404, we, I went ahead and calculated the expected value of the mean. <clears throat> so if we were going to take the expected value of the sample mean, and then in matrix form it's this, then since this is a linear operator, you can, and that's a constant, you can take it out front. This is a constant vector, you can take it out front. It can be written like this. But the data matrix, if we think about it as in columns, and each column is an independent observation, so then we can take the expected value into the data matrix, you know, so it's the expected value of this vector. But each one of those, the expected value is the mean vector, it's the mean, whatever that is of the distribution. So we have a, a matrix where each column is a mean vector. And now if you dot that with one, it's, you're adding up mu n times, and, and that's a constant, so it's n times mu, but the n's cancel and you get mu. So the expected value of a sample mean is um, unbiased. It's the population mean. And this is my last result, is the variance of the sample mean. So we take the variance of x bar, but x bar is this, you know, it's the sum of the uh, sample vectors divided by n. Well, this n can come out front as n squared, 
and then variance is really the covariance so we're taking the covariance of these sums and notice I use a different index on both of those but the covariance is a linear operator so those summations can come out front which is here but now if we think about this this is these are observations so those are vectors but this each observation we're assumes independent from the other so if these indexes are not the same this covariance is zero so this becomes this so um, for each j you know we only want the, the one that equals i and so that becomes this so each of these indexes is i but this is the sample or no Yeah, so the covariance between those two is the covariance matrix. And now this is where the notation stinks. Um, this is the population covariance matrix. And of course, we use sigma as a sum. So it's kind of a silly way to write it, but it's accurate. Well, this is constant. We're adding it up n times. So we get n times the sigma. So one of those n's cancels with this. And we're left with 1 over n times sigma. And so this... It's it's like the it's not the standard error of the mean because it's the variance, but you know, in the in the univariate case, the variance of X, you know, our sample mean is the variance of the population divided by N. And so it's very equivalent. Well, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.